Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I thought I was gonna have to start this vlog with an apology for it being a dreary, I don't know why I feel the need to apologize. I'm British after all for a dreary, rainy, miserable day because it was thundering, thundering on my window panes this morning, but suddenly we have blue skies and the perfect autumn day, which I'm very happy about because Charlie and I are doing um, a lot of hosting this weekend and I always think it's lovely when it is sunny and bright and fresh, just gives, gives a good impression of the house when it's all bright and lovely. So um, yes, I thought for today's video I would make it a little bit more informative hopefully, ho hopefully, because I really want to share with you in today's video some hosting tips. Charlie and I, I've realised, have been hosting for 10 years, pretty much our entire relationship. It was actually our third date that we um, we decided to host a come dine with me at the very fir first place that we lived together in Clapham and we've not stopped since then and I definitely think with hosting practice makes perfect to us now we don't even really think about it it just just kind of comes automatically which is so nice because then we can just really enjoy spending time with friends spending time with family and not worrying about the details but then I've got friends that have never hosted before and they do find it a little bit nerve-wracking um, and aren't quite Quite sure perhaps on the correct etiquette not that I think there needs to be a strict etiquette but I thought throughout the weekend because there's going to be a lot of hosting going on I would share my top tips on how to how to host because for some of you it might be your first time hosting this year maybe your first time hosting Christmas let me know down below if this is your first year hosting Christmas very exciting if it is many of you might have hosted hundreds of times before but maybe a little bit out of practice because you may not have done much last year because of uh COVID. <laughs> but whether it's a casual friends coming over for a dog walk and a Sunday roast or whether you are hosting a New Year's Eve glamorous dinner party for 20 of your friends, I think there are a few things that you can do to have a really wonderful time and just ensure that you and your guests are relaxed and feel comfortable in your home. So I thought as the weekend progresses, I would share those tips in today's video. So you might see behind me that we have got a nice little setup going on over here. Charlie has got um, some cakes from Quince and Clover. I was going to make a pumpkin cake, pumpkin chai cupcake, um, but I don't need to anymore. That is a tip. Prepare as much as you can in advance. So Charlie's parents are coming over this evening with some family friends, but actually we are not going to be here this evening because we're going over to our friends, um, Ben and Robin. They are hosting us for dinner tonight, so I can share some guest etiquette tips as well. Okay, so we're going to start up here in our, what we call the gold bedroom. So we've got Charlie's parents and family friends, Richard and Linda, coming over to stay with us tonight and tomorrow night. And I think Charlie's mum and dad are staying Sunday night as well. So... My first tip is to be as prepared as possible. You don't want to leave anything if you can help it to last minute. So there's quite a few things you can do to prepare in advance. So if you have got friends staying the night, then of course, key prep is getting the bedroom ready. So we have got fresh linen on the beds here in the gold room. Not really too sure why we still call it the gold room when we have changed our minds and we're no longer going to be painting little gold bits in the wall, but never mind. This is a really lovely bed linen, um, which is literally natural linen, and it's from a company called Piglet. So we just absolutely love it. We've got it in the cottages as well. And I would recommend plenty of cushions and a nice spare blanket just in case your guests get chilly in the night. Something else that we love to do is pop some fresh flowers in the bedrooms. You may have seen in the end of my last vlog, I was picking the last of the blooms from the, ki from the kitchen garden area. So we've got some little dahlias over here. And Charlie also picked up these little alliums. Um, I think he got them from Soho Farmhouse actually. So it's nice to just add a little bit of decoration on the dressing table as well as some dried hydrangeas. And this is obviously a complete optional extra but Charlie and I like to leave little goodie bags for our friends and family when they stay. Um, mostly just some beauty products, things in case they've 
in case they've forgotten anything. There's some essentials in there, just as a little welcome gift. I think it goes without saying, but obviously some nice fresh towels, make sure your hand soap is topped up, make sure there's a little bin in the bathrooms and make sure you have got a full loo roll and a couple of spares is always useful in the bathroom. I like to try and get the bedrooms ready at least two days before our guests are due to arrive. It just ticks a few things off my to-do list. So the bedrooms are done. So the gold bedroom has got my seal of approval. And then Charlie's parents will be staying in the pink room. It looks like we haven't ironed the bed sheets, but that is, I promise you, just contrast from the window. It is beautifully neat and perfectly ironed. Um, again, we have got some extra pillows, towels on the bed, some little goodie bags. If you have got guests staying with you over the Christmas period for a little while, you might also want to consider blackout blinds, which will, of course, help with light, but also sound. That's something that we had to put in after having Charlie's nan in this room last Christmas. That's definitely something to consider. And then here we've got my beautiful dahlias from the garden. They just look so, so pretty. I think it's uh, just a really lovely extra touch if you can bring some blooms into your guest bedrooms. So during our setup, we've had a an antiques delivery this morning and this new plate stacking display unit has arrived from Collinge Antiques. I have to take my hat off to Charlie, he found this one. We'd been looking for maybe getting an entirely new unit here, um, but Charlie spotted this one on the same website, was it, that we actually got that yeah, unit from? So, so Collinge, is a, they're, they're a Welsh antique company, mm -hmm. and we actually, I think the first antiques we bought when we moved into town were from there. Oh really? And they do a lot, they do a lot, they sell mostly oak, but like dark oak. Yeah. So there's a real big difference, I always think, to like this sort of darker stained oak, yeah. to like mahogany. Yeah. Not man and mahogany, much prefer this. So yeah, these two pieces weirdly were bought at separate times and are from separate separate um, collections and stuff. I think they'll work together. Obviously this needs to come this way a bit. This is probably gonna overhang by like that much either side. It's but, so perfect because we were gonna get something made, but... Well, and I, and I think when we've got all the plates stacked, it maybe doesn't look great just Grab yet. one of these and just see how it looks in there. Grab one of the plates. So even like... Oh, it's going to look so cute. Uh, oh, we'll obviously yeah, stack them properly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and then even, you know, not maybe this, but like stuff will go. Yeah. You know, like that. So is it a proper like shelving unit? Yeah. I mean, it's actually not that deep, but we knew that when we bought it. And it's got these little ridges so you can put the plates in. You can even put, obviously you wouldn't light a candle there, but like yeah. for decoration. I think the point was in this room is this is a very traditional room, isn't it? Yeah. And we wanted this room to sort of feel quite traditional. We're still, this room, and we've not painted, we've not done anything. We've got a lot more plans for this room. But mm -hmm. I think gradually when you find the right antique piece. You just and this was up. just, absolutely, this was just such a big expanse of wall and we didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. And I think that's the perfect it fits piece. just perfectly, doesn't it? Charlie reckons that it's stable enough to put a few bits and bobs on the unit in front of it. To be fair, it's not really wobbling. So as long as we don't put anything fragile up there, I think we'll be fine. But while we're in here, I think I will take this opportunity to give my next hosting tip. And I'm not gonna go into this um, table. Oops, there's my tea towel. I'm not gonna go into this table in too much detail because I did share this with you at the end of my gosh, what day will that have gone live? At the end of my Sunday vlog, but it was a long one. So just to recap, this is my foraged table. We had an ash tree cut down from our garden as per the recommendation of our tree surgeons. And I, as you may know, just hate seeing things go to waste. So we made these tree cookies, these basically, um, what do you call them? Oh my gosh, I've completely forgotten the name of the thing that you put under your dinner plates. I'm sure when I'm editing, I'll remember and I'll put it on the screen here. I need to have my afternoon coffee. Um, but yeah, it makes a really nice place setting and I've also got a few different sizes just to create a little bit of variation in the height on the table. So I've got a, cu a couple of the tree cookies stacked up there with a pumpkin on. And what I would definitely recommend doing is laying your table the day before your event or your party because then it's just one more thing off your mind. If you live in a house like ours that's uh, quite dusty, then you might want to leave the glassware. I'll actually run this through the dishwa dishwasher in a second just to make sure everything is completely 
spotless, ready for our guests to arrive, but setting up the table the day before is just one less thing to worry about on the day. And you really don't need to spend loads of money on table decorations, obviously the, the tree bits, obviously the wood cookies were completely free from a fallen tree in our garden. And then you can see I've collected some leaves and some pine cones. The pumpkins are from our farm next door, but obviously you could grow them yourself. So it's a really natural table setting. Sorry if you can hear a funny noise in the background. Dexter has just decided to um, do a little bit of digging. Oh, it's chicken! It's my chicken that's digging. Are you trying to find Australia, little boy? You won't have any luck. You won't have any luck, my sweet boy. <laughs> and for this table setting, I've copied a style that they did at Dalesford where they just had the napkins resting underneath. You could wedge the napkins in between the two, but I thought I would just quickly show you another napkin design that I like to do and that I will probably end up doing at Christmas. Call me lazy, but I actually quite like how napkins look when they're unironed. I think sometimes I'm a little bit afraid to use them if napkins look too neat and tidy. And then I've got this lovely, deep, almost emerald green ribbon which I, I actually used some of this last year I bought it in red last year as well um, and I just get this from Amazon so I'll leave this link down below I'd recommend cutting into gosh maybe like 30 centimeter strips and you should always cut ribbon on a slant as well and that will stop it from fraying and then what I like to do is just fold my napkin into a square and then fold the two corners in, almost as though I'm making a paper aeroplane, and then grab your ribbon. And then I've just tied it into a very quick and easy little bow along the front. Now what you could do at this stage is grab some seasonal foliage from the garden, so where we had our holly tree um, given a haircut. I've taken this lovely pretty branch, luckily they're not too spiky, with some holly leaves and you can just slip that. Okay, that's maybe a little bit big but it still looks rather lovely and festive. And then you can either slide your cutlery in there as well and it would look a little something like this or what you could do instead is slip your cutlery inside if you feel like your foliage deserves a little bit more of a moment in the spotlight. And I also have in these drawers under the unit some foliage that I keep going back to. So these were actually from a bunch of flowers that I received in spring. Um, I think it's a type of eucalyptus but it dried out so nicely and I use these very frequently with my napkins. And then we also salvaged these dried poppies from the garden so again they're really nice and I just try to gather them up after each meal but if anything gets lost or put in the bin accidentally you know they were free so I'm not too bothered. I've also got some nice hessian ribbon in here and some traditional napkin rings. Okay I've come into the drawing room for my next tips because I'm just going around the house and getting everything ready, all the different rooms ready. And something which is really, really, really important to think about when you are hosting is the general atmosphere of your home. So atmosphere, I would say, is just like the general feeling that you and your guests have when they are in your home. And I would argue that along with food, it is actually the most important thing. When your guests arrive, you want them to feel comfortable, you want them to feel relaxed, or do you want them to feel like hyped up and ready to party? There are some things that you can do to really change the atmosphere in your room. So a few things that Charlie and I like to, to do or to consider doing are things like lighting candles or lighting a fire. Not only does that scent your house or the room, but also helps to create the atmosphere. As I showed you earlier, we love to bring flowers into the house. I love to bring the outside in as much as possible. I'll show you a few more natural florals that we've got throughout the house in a second. And something else that is so important to every event, whether it's a wedding or a birthday party or a dinner party, is of course music. And music can really set the tone of an event. I would say that you can, this is also something else, you can really plan ahead, get your playlist all set up ready, ensure that you are comfortable with where your speaker is and how to use it. And Charlie and I have recently got the new Sonos Beam Gen 2. We've got the original in our family room and it's connected to our TV, but we've just got the Gen 2. So before we put it in the family room, we have got it in here in the drawing room ahead of our weekend of hostings. And it is just 
absolutely perfect for in this room. I will show you. <laughs> the funny thing is, you can barely see it, which is actually kind of the point because one of my friends had the very good expression that a speaker should be heard and not seen. And I totally agree, but um, in case you can't see it, it is <laughs> this speaker just here. So this is a Sonos Beam Gen 2 and it's so minimal and sleek that it's really unobtrusive because as you can see, this is a very old and traditional room. And so we want something that's really sympathetic to our surroundings, that's going to blend in and be there really subtly and perform really well, but not be, um, you know, it just kind of blends in and looks really good. And this unit, by the way, is another new antique. And I think this also came from college, actually, and it just fits in so perfectly. So I actually set this up before I'd even had my morning coffee. It was so easy. So it does come with two wires. One obviously plugs it in, one to connect with your TV. I've only got the one wire in use at the moment because we're using it as a speaker separately to the TV just for this weekend. Um, and because we've got other Sonos products in the house, my phone actually automatically connected to it. So it does have um, a little button just here and that will send it into searching mode. So if you don't have anything in your house at the moment or if a friend wants to connect to it, then it's as easy as that. If you get the Sonos app on your phone, you can literally tap it onto the speaker and then it connects. It is the easiest thing in the world. So I've prepared myself by getting my phone all set up on the speaker. I know that as soon as our guests are due to arrive, I can just set my playlist up. And I would, th and I would recommend thinking carefully about your playlist. Is it, um, do you want some kind of classical, relaxing music? Do you want some festive music? Do you want some jazz? Obviously with the Sonos, I can control everything that it plays from right here on my phone. And I'm on the Sonos app now, and I can actually go to Sonos Radio. And there are loads of different playlists on here. <laughs> Obviously it's Halloween as I'm filming this, so we've got a Monster Bash playlist, horror punk. Okay, definitely don't want any of those. <laughs> right, let's put on some smooth jazz. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit sensual. So that's really handy when you are entertaining your guests. You can control the music from your phone. You don't need to worry about going over to the speaker every time. So it really just fits in very seamlessly with your entertaining. And even though it's such a compact speaker as it's Sonos, you can expect that it's just got a really lovely, rich and immersive sound experience. And something that is particularly great for this room is that it's got a technology in it called True Play. And basically when you set this up, it almost puts a feeler out into the room and it can detect the size of the room, the kind of furniture that you've got the room, and it actually adapts the way that it plays the music to give the best sound quality for the room. And I've never heard of a speaker doing anything like that before. It really is quite insane. And then something that Charlie is just obsessed with and no doubt will be showing off with his dad later. I think we got our love of Sonos from Charlie's dad, who's got them all throughout their, their house where Charlie grew up. But the new um, Sonos Beam Gen 2 works with Dolby Atmos. So basically what that means is you can get the really immersive surround sound. So when you're watching a movie or a TV program, you can, it literally sounds, if there's footsteps, for example, the speakers make it sound as though the footsteps are coming from behind you, or maybe you can hear a wave going left to right. It is, it's like you're at a cinema. It's such insane, immersive surround experience. As much as I'm enjoying this jazz playlist, to be honest, I'd probably leave music like this, just really nice background music when you're actually eating, but we do also like to play, unsurprisingly, things like the Piano Guys, Emil Pandolfi, who is a, um, a pianist. Charlie loves Alexis French, that kind of music, just inoffensive things and often songs without lyrics I think can be the best for background music because then you don't feel that the music is interrupting your conversation, instead it's just there building atmosphere in the background. It is honestly so amazing how seamlessly this just fits into the room. It's such an unobtrusive speaker. I think it looks so good. I really want to keep it here, but I know that Charlie's definitely going to want to add this under the TV. You can get a wall mount as well, 
or literally just place it on a unit underneath your TV. Um, but yeah, I think it's fantastic for having in this room as well. So that's all ready and set up for our guests. And by the way, if you happen to, you know, if your phone's locked or something, you can obviously control the music actually from the Sonos Beam as well. You can even pause it, you can use uh, sound control, you can press that when it's got the microphone, you can control it with, with the microphone or of course with your TV control, but yeah, that's just the way that I like to do it from my phone or direct on the speaker. So that's set up. I might even just use one of the playlists that's on Sonos Radio, I don't feel the need to go and create a different one. They've got so many different things in here. Let's listen to concert hall classical music while I finish doing the rest of the preparation. We have just had a delivery and I promise you this is not planned, but this perfectly demonstrates my next point. So another tip that I would have if you are a guest at someone's party is that if you're going to bring a gift to ensure it's something that the host actually doesn't have to do anything with. So ideally not a fresh bouquet of flowers because then the host has to trim them and put them in water, but flowers are such a lovely gift. So something that you could do instead is to send a delivery earlier in the day so that the host can get them looking beautiful and all prepped before the madness of the actual evening. I don't actually know who these are from, um, but such perfect timing ahead of us having a house full of guests this weekend so let's open this up and have a look inside Goodness, this really is a treat. I've just had this incredible delivery, including the white roses from Flowerbox from the Tom Ford beauty team. And oh my gosh, I adore Tom Ford makeup and fragrances, but I think this might just be the most perfect eyeshadow palette in the entire world. It is just the most beautiful wearable shades with some deep, almost like a deep rust color and a sparkle and two very wearable everyday shades. That is perfection. Also this really beautiful like shimmering lipstick, that is so gorgeous, I cannot wait to try that. This whole collection smells of this, I think they must have misted it into the boxes. And it is Soleil Neige, I used to wear, I wore this pretty much all last November and December. I have actually got a tiny bit left but I think I needed a new bottle because mine been sat out in the sun for a long time. So that is such a lovely delivery from Tom Ford and even this beautiful little makeup pouch. How stunning. Oh my gosh. Totally spoilt but that entire flower undoing process did take a good 15 minutes as you saw. I presented them in this little low vase um, so you really wouldn't want to have to give a host that job on the evening that she's trying to prepare everything and entertain guests so sending flowers in advance is a really lovely idea or alternatively if you are the host you can definitely delegate um, flower prep and things like that to your guests but yeah Tom Ford what an absolute treat very very generous thank you so very much hello again darlings it's now a few hours later and we are just getting ready to head out to our friends Ben and Robin's house for a lovely evening. We are the guests tonight and I'm very much looking forward to a night off which is going to be really really good fun. So we have something extra special planned this evening. They actually have a private chef cooking us the most incredible, hopefully the most incredible Indian meal and the chef on Instagram is dining with Ara. I'm going to leave her Instagram link down below and Ara actually messaged me on Instagram asking if she could come and create a meal here at our house for one of our gatherings. And then when I did a bit more research, I realized that she actually lived closer to Robin. And I was with Robin when I got this message and we thought it'd be such a fantastic idea to actually do this evening at Robin's house. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Ara has got in store for us. We chose a few dishes based on some things which looked incredible on her Instagram. I think she brings most of the food pre or partially made, um, does a little bit of the finishing touches at your house. It's something that we've never experienced before, having a private chef at 
you know someone's house so i'm really intrigued and very much looking forward to some scrumptious indian food i have just quickly got changed into a fresh dress because we actually had to or i actually had to fill the old defender with um cardboard boxes with recycling and take a trip down to our recycling center and I did it wearing the dress that I've been wearing all day, which is probably not the best idea. Um, so I've had a quick outfit change. And gosh, the lighting is very blue, but you can see it is this gorgeous, long, a little bit casual in its um, fabric, but not so casual in the silhouette. This gorgeous Zimmerman dress. It's kind of like a, a biscuity colour as the body of the dress. I've added my Gucci belt to dress it up a little bit. I have got my Valentino boots on underneath, chunky block heel, and then this beautiful floral detail and these lovely buttons. Now I'm actually waiting for Charlie to get home. I think we're going to be a little bit late, which is a major faux pas as a guest to a dinner party. But yes, this is the outfit of the evening and I shall see you when we get there. and it is all go in the kitchen. Ara is here and what do we have for our starter? Or oh, this is the snack, is it? Yeah, these are the snacks. So this is the um, air bread. It will be filled Ooh. with curry cheese and <gasps> paneer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then we've got the Bombay potatoes. That oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> what actually is paneer? Like cheese. It's oh, it is cheese. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Not like you, but it's good cheese. Oh my gosh, sounds incredible. Well, Ara has got the whole kitchen smelling incredible. Well, I hope it tastes good as well. Oh my gosh, we can't wait. For our snacks, we've just had a paneer parcel, and these are, what did she say they were, Char? Bombay potatoes bravas. Bombay potatoes so bravas. India meets Spain. India meets Ibiza. Oh my gosh. Bon appetit. It smells so good. Wow, keep away from the doggy. Saturday morning, as you will have just seen, we've just had a delicious breakfast. We have got a house full today, so we've got Charlie's parents and family friends staying here. So Charlie just whipped up a delicious smoked salmon, uh, scrambled eggs, and I did some kale from the garden in the Arga, and it was a delicious start to the day. We've also got some fresh squeezed orange juice, and the coffee machine's been going non-stop. So we've had a, a really nice start to the day, and it is a beautiful day today so we're about to head out for a little walk and explore. Last night was just so lovely. The food was <laughs> out of this world, quite simply incredible. I think we had seven courses. Ara did the most incredible job. We're already thinking about when we can have another meal with her because it was just just made the evening flow so nicely ben and robin didn't have to keep dashing into the kitchen ara had a friend with her that was coming and collecting the plates so it really just made our evening of catching up so much more smooth and stress-free so a really nice idea if you are thinking about hosting at your house but you don't necessarily want to cook i think it's a great idea so i'm going to leave ara's instagram down below it's a fantastic fantastic idea and the most delicious indian food so that was brilliant um and now we're heading for a lovely fresh walk so this is the outfit of the day nice cozy jumper holland cooper gilet amazon leggings and my brunello cuccinelli wellies So we, many smells, so many new so smells. So much excitement, yep. so much excitement. The wiggler. 
little wiggly butt butt. Little wiggly butt butt. Listen. Lovely. Boy. So we have brought Charlie's family to the Rollwright Stones and the King's Stone is behind us. This is a little version, the Cotswolds version of Stonehenge. Three monuments, the Whispering Knight's Burial Chamber, the King's Men's Stone Circle, and the King's Stone, a ceremonial stone circle dating back to 2500 BC. So that's four and a half thousand years these stones have been here. Incredible. There's a gentleman here and he is carving what kind of wood was it, Charles? I love them, don't you? These walking sticks, so effective. Yeah. Wow. The witches and wizards have arrived for the Halloween celebrations. That's a nice, I like that one though. I like that. It's about the height for him. Because Dada's tall. That is, he's quite tall. People come around. Walking various places and seeing these at. Ralph. Oh, yes. for the eve of Halloween. So just here is the Rollwright Stones and the Kingstone and um, some local witches and druids yep, have come here for a fire ceremony and we're just walking around all the local, all the surrounding woodlands and there's lots of like witchy structures. It's quite eerie but we're gonna go and explore. But the, he obviously is investing his own money in, into Miami. So we didn't plan this, but we have come to the Rollwright Stones when a group called the Watchers of the New Age, who are a group of witches and druids, are doing a, uh, a Watchers, oh no, Watchers of the Old Age ceremony. And they said that we can come and watch. <laughs> Taxi's trying to take part. I'm intrigued. Charlie's got his hazel star. So they're now going to do a stamping ritual. They said that the energy settles on the earth like dust and by stamping they are releasing the energy from the earth. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
evening darlings, it's a few hours later. Gosh, when did I last actually speak to the camera? We have since been to uh, the pub. We went to the Red Lion in Long Compton. We had um, some rosé. I've just been summoned. We've got to go. We're heading to the farmhouse for dinner. Outfit of the evening is River Island jumper dress, uh, Stan Studio coat, which you can get 10% off on Farfetch, and my Saint Laurent boots. I'm gonna finish with a spritz of fragrance. It is the Michael Kors. It is the Michael Kors gorgeous fragrance. It's really lovely. It's got tonka and sandalwood in there. Okay. Let's go. It's Sunday morning. We've had our brunch for the morning and we're about to head out for a walk. And Charlie's just doing the prep for our roast pork. How long is it going in the oven for today? So the roast, the roast shoulder of pork. It's a great cut of meat to do if you're entertaining for a lot of people because it's very affordable. So it's like a third of the price of a bit of beef. And I actually it's think it's the tastiest. It is, but if it, cooked it, it, properly. It's, time it's, a, it's a very time consuming day today. Yeah. Because it goes in for half an hour at 220 degrees with nothing on it. So just it's a rolled shoulder. Of Not pork. even salt. Just salt. Okay. Um, but what I mean is no cover. Oh, right. And then you put, must have a bit of dodgy onion. Uh, then you put um, foil over it. Lower the temperature of the oven to 170. We'll, tap, we'll link the recipe, and then it's in four and a half hours. Four and a half and hours. Then it goes. It comes out, and then it goes back in with the trivet for another hour. Wow. Yeah. But the good thing is you can leave it while we go out for the day. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so we've got a good two and a bit hours now that we can leave it for. Brilliant. Perfect for entertaining. We have just got back to the house after a trip to Adderry to show Charlie's parents the cottage and it's time to get ready for the roast. My job is to make some apple sauce. So I have just collected some apples from the garden and I'm going to whip up a quick apple sauce in the Thermomix. <laughs> Term. Yummy stuff, yeah, that is the, that is the scientific term you'll find. Yummy mix of stuff. Vegetable stock in here. And then you're going to let it simmer away. It starts to really thicken up. Yummy. Smells good. I always think, why put all the effort into the meat? And then I use granule gravy. So we won't be seeing any ads for Bisto on your channel anytime soon. No, Bisto come calling. <laughs> can show on the door. <laughs> I love a good bit of Bisto. <laughs> okay, so we are almost ready to serve our roast. We've lit the candles and we've got the apple sauce and the condiments out here on the table. And what Charlie and I like to do is just pop the trays, the trays that we actually cooked the food in here on the windowsill and everyone just kind of comes and helps themselves and that just makes it so much easier, everyone can grab as much as they want, come back for seconds um, and it also means a little bit less washing up because we're serving the dishes in the trays that they got cooked in so they also stay nice and warm and that would be a little tip, I think the candlelight is really nice if you've got a dinner party so we've lit lots of candles, created some new ones by sticking pillar candles in plant pots and it looks lovely and cosy. Good morning darlings. It is now Monday morning. I had to have a little bit of a lion this morning. Our guests all left last night and um, I think I just needed to catch up on sleep after a long weekend of excitement. So today is obviously a work day. Mondays are usually my admin day and I'm also doing back to back loads of washing today. That's the thing after your guests leave. Obviously you need to change lots of beds, do lots of towels and things like that. So I'm just 
basically having a washing machine on continuous load today. I've got some washing here in the kitchen and to feel myself, I am treating myself as it is now officially the 1st of November to a little mince pie for my breakfast. We picked up a few Christmas bits from Dalesford yesterday and now that Halloween's out of the way, it is time to enjoy all things festive. It is quite literally the world's smallest mince pie, but as it's from Dalesford, I'm pretty sure it's going to be scrumptious. <sighs> oh my gosh. I'm going to need to eat about 10 of these. Okay, fueled up on mince pies and it is time to give the guest rooms a quick clean and strip the beds. I love it when the guests make the beds afterwards because then if I don't have time to change the bed sheets for a week or so, the room still looks neat and tidy. You wouldn't even tell that this has been slept in. But I'm going to strip the beds, get them in the wash, get them drying, ready to be fresh and ready for our next guests. And we definitely have a house full later on in this month for my birthday. Um, so I'm going to get this changed over and looking fresh again. <laughs> my endless washing today and our admin to show you my goodness another level of <laughs> greenhouse removal yeah what is good though it shows us the amount of space that's there yeah we obviously have a strategy don't we to have the we replacing that oil tank with a more slimline one hopefully yeah but it does give you an idea of the space that's there yeah and as I let you guys know, we hopefully will be getting a new greenhouse, but just a little bit later than anticipated. So we need to think of something temporary I can put here. Thank you for all of your suggestions. I'm definitely going to look into getting a polytunnel or even see if there's um, anything slightly more visual <laughs> that we can pop there. And then you might have noticed what Charlie is currently leaning on. We have got a new garden gate. So the chaps are actually here, just here doing the finishing touches. But yeah, we now have a proper wooden gate down here in the garden. It's a bit of devastation down here for now, but before too long, it's gonna be looking good. Well, it has been a day of pretty much non-stop laundry and <laughs> non-stop admin very very boring but it's always good to just get on top of all the chores after a busy weekend and darlings i'm going to end the vlog here because the hosting is now over and that has been the theme for today's video so i really hope you enjoyed hopefully it's been hopefully you've picked up a couple of nuggets of information and if you have got any top tips on hosting and if you're hosting for christmas then let me know in the comment section down below and yeah really hope you enjoyed this video i will see you on thursday for the next one bye